See, the problem is there were so – after Jersey Shore, there were so many like that. Like we know Real Housewives in New Jersey because that's like a series or whatever. Yeah. But then there were so many other little ones. I can't keep track of them. You but, just – dude, you will never <clears> – so like I'm close with Mike. I'm I'm close with Jenny. Those are like my two great friends. And then, you know, I'm friends with Nicole. How's but she like, doing these days? I, I love her. She is the coolest – person ever so is jenny so is mike but like like sammy too i haven't like i haven't uh i haven't spoken to her in a while but like like you can just never reenact like you never you, you just never get that cast again like the first no. time i met ronnie he was like covered in like this road rash because like his girlfriend like ran him over <laughs> in a car and you're, you're just like like ron what are you doing dude you're a multi-millionaire like you made it like you're getting into these fights with your girlfriend she ran you over in a car like what yeah. like, but it's like dude it's just what makes them so entertaining like lovable yeah. you can't look away yeah you can take them and out of jersey they, but you can't take the jersey out of that like dude angelina's on a ring camera throwing chicken nuggets at a handicapped person like <laughs> like how do you like and that's going, we have a video of that uh, dude I, <laughs> I got it. I'm sorry. You're giving so many good ones. Some of these got to be on video. Minus I'm, the ones I'm just on saying, video. like, how do you not, how do you just not tune into these people, man? It's. So she was thrown man. Uh, I guess she didn't know they were handicapped. <laughs> it was like a handicap part. Maybe she was parked in a handicapped oh, no. spot and she was throwing chicken nuggets at somebody. <laughs> um, <laughs> she is fucking funny, man. It's uh. just, it's just. It's just so entertaining, but like, when did you start to realize though that because for people out oh, there who I'm aren't... so sorry, the segue I forgot, dude. What was the segue? Away. So basically, man, um, what had happened was I started cooking for Mike. My buddy Sean on Facebook checked in to the Olympia. Now, like, I went to Free Old Borough. We had a lot of, we had all these great friends in high school. But, like, Sean never played sports. He was just, like, the token Indian dude. Friends with everybody, sweetheart. Everybody loved Sean. But, like, Sean was not an athlete. He was not a bodybuilder and never tried to be one. It wasn't like he was trying. He just mm. never worked out, never gave a fuck about bodybuilding. I was a total meathead. My life was dedicated to lifting weights, eating chicken, eating fucking steak. So I hit up Sean and I'm like, dude, like, what are you doing at the Olympia? And he goes, oh, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm the CFO of Shreds. And this is 2013. And Shreds is the pioneer of influencer marketing. So mm. it's like every single fucking person you see on the internet now selling a product on social media was never like that until Shreds. Shreds was the first fucking company to bombard really? the internet with like people like me and you. Shreds. I don't know if I remember that. Shreds company. Shreds. S H R E D Z. Oh, E D Z. I have it as Z. S. Yeah. Shreds took a bunch of like normal people who worked out at the gym and made them famous on the internet. Oh, these are like diet pills and shit. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's unsurprising. <laughs> so, so what's really funny? So Arvin, Arvin was on the show, and I was like, I wish there was a way I could I could work with you. Wait, which show? I lost your first. Jersey second. Shore. Got it. Okay. Arvin, Arvin, like I think hooked up with Sammy in one of the seasons. He was like Mike's friend. Okay. They were at like Bamboo somewhere in Seaside, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All Always shredded. Sell. Seaside was the spot. Yeah. So. So Mike and Arvin were friends, and Sean got me in. So I drove up to Jersey City with some meals. I met Arvin. Sean's like, oh, yeah, Arvin, uh, Arvin actually heard of you. So, like, Frank would save all the containers. That's Situation's brother, Frank. Right. So there was a whole pantry filled with, like, E Clean Bro containers. So that's how, like, Arvin heard of me. And Arvin mm. was like, Frank, like, what are you doing with all these fucking containers? Like... <laughs> recycle them or something he's like no 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 so like frank had this huge stash of and that's how that's how arvin heard of me i came in arvin really liked me and i started cooking for for like arvin and and all the the guys at shreds and then he had all of the most 
like influential fitness people in the in the mm. industry at the time. So that's when I started cooking for all those guys. They started doing posts for me and I started getting like pretty big traction online on Instagram. And it wasn't until I got introduced to Massey, who at the time was Manco Fit. She was the most um, – she had a million followers on Instagram back in 2013, which was like unheard of. Yeah. And she was the biggest like Latino fitness influencer, you know, celebrity personal trainer, blah, blah, blah. I started cooking for Massey and she really liked me. And then she introduced me to Lala Anthony. Carmelo's wife? Carmelo's wife, yeah. And uh, I started cooking for her. I became friends with Lala, became friends with Mello. Were you doing all custom meals for these people? No, no. I took every opportunity to, like, every time I would get another famous customer, I would just take that opportunity to level up my game. Because mm. I wanted to make sure that the people who were getting my food got the same food as famous people. I didn't want to, like, yeah. I didn't want to be some fucking dork who is lighting it up for a famous person and then like shitting on my bread and butter good for you your everyday people are your bread and butter dude the second yes. they give up on you you're done you're toast i've cooked for more famous people i can't even remember all the famous people i've cooked for they come and go but like your everyday you know people who support you they're the ones that need to be happy so lala blew me up dude she fucking put me on and like she did a post for me my fucking bro my phone wouldn't work because you had too much coming in. It was too much coming in. Mm -hmm. Like my iPhone just crashed. Emails crashed for like two days. I got 40,000 followers in like 24 hours. Damn. And it went viral. Yeah, Chris uh, Chris Jenner was following me. Kevin Hart was following me. Uh, I think they followed me because they were writing cookbooks and just dumped me after they got what they <laughs> needed. But like there was a time they were following me. Um, and then so – once like I had that buzz with Lala see like there's famous people but like there's people with clout Lala's one of those people dude like Lala says jump people just start jumping so when she gave me that um and plus back in 2013 time frame 2014 when like a celebrity endorsed you it was more meaningful than it is now sure it's like yeah. it's really diluted so much of it now so Lala's endorsement was like the trajectory that just I had a lot of street cred in New Jersey, but like Lala's endorsement just made me the man in New York. You know, I was in with the Knicks coming into Madison Square Garden, like, oh, that's Carmelo's boy, you know, walking into the <laughs> garden. I'm like, dude, I was like fucking crying in my car a year and a half ago, like not knowing what I wanted to do in my life. And now being escorted around Madison Square Garden, I thought like this is like a dream come true. I started cooking for the Knicks, and then, like, I got in all, like, you know, Z100, um, oh, DJ the radio Sus station. One, like, like yeah. all the radios, all, like, all, like, the uh, the radio stations, and then, like, Lala set me up with uh, Angie, Beyonce's cousin, and I started cooking for, um, you know, Jay-Z's Jay -Z's, um, cousin, Jarrell, and I just got, like, hooked up with that family, and... Um, you were just, this is network web like I've ever seen. Oh, dude, it just... It just it just spread like wildfire. But I think it was because like I never asked anybody for shit. So it's not yeah. like I become friends with this rich person, I ask him for money, or become friends with this famous person, I ask him for fame. Like it's funny just, how that works. I've just always been trying to level up my game and make my food better. And you know, like I could never repay Lala for what she did. But now I try to be involved in Lala's charity. So like she's helping kids at Rikers Island and like I try to net I try to share my network with her of attorneys. And I try to just make sure that like nobody's stabbing her in the back or nobody's snaking her. So I set her up with a bunch of attorneys that are down to work for free. So like that helps her a little. It's nothing compared to what she did for me, but like I will always be there for her and I will I will do whatever I can to help her any any way possible. And and there's times she calls me for advice and it's just the greatest compliment like ever um it's incredibly humbling when like people like that call me and ask for my opinion and stuff like that it's just like it's incredible so well i think you're nailing it on the head though because i said this word earlier in the podcast because it kind of relates to everything you're you're talking about with your story but it's all it's all karma man i mean like if you don't go out there just holding your hand out and asking people to give you shit 
you know, and, and you just go about your business and you do something good. Yeah. And, and especially when you do it for a long time and, you know, you, again, you're not just tit for tatting stuff. It adds up. And people will say, well, oh, then you're just long gaming it for it to add up. No, you put good shit out into the universe. You put good positive vibes out there. You do the right thing by people. And yes, eventually the universe will reward you a little bit for yourself. But like even in rewarding you, it's it's like – you built a huge company that's now in whatever it is, 17 states. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.